What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Imperfect Swing Golf Podcast. Today we have one of the, I would say, most informed players on the on the planet right now. Uh, two wins uh, on the Sunshine Ladies Tour already this year. Um, joined by Lynn. Lynn, uh, thanks for making time. I know you're obviously preparing for the next two events out here in SA, but um, just your overall uh, kind of reception to being in South Africa. You've been here for a couple of weeks now. Um, I mean, it's my first time coming here, and um, it's been it's been a good, like you said, two wins so far. So it's been a good couple of weeks, and we just had some time off and got to um, yeah look around a little bit outside of the golf courses, which is nice. And, and now we're kind of back to back to business again. And you know. For people, you know, you obviously a uh, newly turned pro, uh, which is kind of weird to say with three wins in the bag already. But for people who don't really know who Lynn is, can you maybe give us a short little summary into to who you are? Um, let's let's say a, a three sentence summary of Lynn. As a golfer or as a person? As a person, come on, Lynn. As a person, okay. Um, well, you never know. Um, <laughs> I think uh, well, that's our one. I'm very. Um, let's see, three sentences. Um, I think um, I'm very different. I w- wouldn't say different as a person outside of the golf course, but um, I'm very good at separating my life on the golf course and my life outside of golf. That was why I asked the question <laughs> because to me they're <laughs> to- two totally different things. Um, but um, just as on the golf course, I'm very competitive in life. Um, I'm very like motivated to become better as a person and learn more and and kind of develop as a human being. Um, and then, like I said, I I try to stay <laughs> so far away from golf as possible when I'm not playing golf and I think that's kind of my have been like my um, recipe to success so far um, to kind of give myself space outside of the golf course and focus on other things family and friends and and all my other interests that's that's quite interesting and I think yeah I think a lot of golfers would say that they quite the overthinkers and I think uh, golf can literally tear your brain apart if you spend too much time thinking about it especially if things aren't going well because then it's like you're almost searching for something that will never come but you 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 just like in this kind of anxiety anxious mode of trying to find an answer to a question that you know, you just need to take some time away, for instance, or something. So that's quite a, a refreshing thing to see, especially, you know, at such a young point in your career as well. So for the golfers out there, there's the recipe to success, three wins already. Um, but, you know, before we go deeper into, you know, your recent um, victories on, on the Sunshine Ladies Tour, uh, what would you say, you know, coming to South Africa, what was your initial um goals that you set out coming here Uh, i know a lot of the the european um ladies come over to kind of use this as a pre-season warm-up um obviously with the wind the winter over in europe you know conditions aren't really ideal over there uh what was your your initial um goals coming in here and just your expectations as well um i mean like you're saying it's winter at home so it was for sure for a pre-season kind of deal um, but like I said, I'm, I'm very competitive. So at the same time, I, I don't ever, uh, sign up for a tournament that I don't think I'm going to win. Um, and, um, going, coming here, um, just having a look at the field and everything. I, I kind of knew that sure. I have stuff that I want to kind of get my results on, um, things I worked on this winter, kind of figure everything out, kind of make new plans for the season, see if, that practice kind of um, did good. So that was one thing to kind of see how my winter uh, practice had been going. Um, But also, like I said, very competitive. So I was for sure not coming here just to, um, you know, see my own game. I'm I'm always here to play good and and do better and win. So I think I I got them both, (laughs) 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 Uh, which is good. Um, But yeah. That was the plan. 
And, you know, you mentioned kind of using this as a time to see how your, your off season work kind of paid off, you know, December was quite a busy stretch for you with your, your trips over to America to, you know, secure an LPGA card, but also you were on the, the LET qualifying school as well, where you also secured honors oh, or a card over there. Um, what's, what was that off season like? I mean, that must've been such a high for you coming off of, you know, securing those two results, you know, on two different sides of the planet, basically. Um, how did you process all of that and then also look into the off season and prepare accordingly? I mean, Q school was a very long, especially since I was going to Europe as well and doing the LT. So uh, I was sick multiple times. <laughs> My body was like refusing to like, give, <laughs> give me more energy to play. So I think I was sick. Um, I was sick on the second stage. And then it was a break, right? And then third stage in the US, I was sick again. Like, I was, <laughs> I was really sick. It was like feverish and everything. It was fine though. And then I did that and I was so drained. And then I had to fly straight to Spain and I got sick again. I was so sick. Like I couldn't stand when I was playing. I had to sit down in between every shot because um, I had stomach pains and um, I was feeling really really bad um so for me that kind of last week was just like you just have to get out of bed and push through because the first day of competition the weather was shit as well like it was <laughs> raining and it was super windy and the conditions of the golf course was really bad actually so it wasn't like a treat to go out and play <laughs> and on top of that I was really sick um so like after every round i remember one of the interviewers wanted to catch an interview with me before i got up to the hotel room but i was so quick because i was feeling so bad so i just went straight up to the hotel room and i was in the bathtub for three hours my dad had to come knock on the door and was like hey are you okay in there? are you gonna have dinner tonight or? so um so that last week was just like i don't know uh a scream of help I guess I was just so drained out uh, mentally and physically um, even though and in the back of my mind I was like proud of myself to yeah. have been able to get both cards so it was just to get home and do Christmas and spend time with my family was kind of what I needed so I just took maybe it was three or four weeks off like totally off just to reset kind of um, both golf and gym and everything um, and then kind of got back with my uh, coach sat down and made a plan for the year and kind of set up some goals and what we needed to do and and um, kind of got into some projects before coming here so um, it was both it was both like I really needed time off um, because those last weeks were really rough um, and at the same time, I kind of wanted to get started on the new things because I knew that um, there was especially one area, uh, wedges, that I felt like I had more potential in like building up a new system for how I, how I practice, but also how I, um, how I choose my distances and, I and how I play. So that was kind of that project, which I got, got paid off pretty well uh, on these tournaments when I look at it stats-wise. Um, so it's going in the right direction. And like you mentioned, it must have been a, you know, it's it's obviously not nice to play, you know, under the weather when you're not really feeling all all that great. But I suppose in a way, it was also a bit of a, a confidence booster knowing you could get it done even though you weren't at hundred percent. Did you take that as you know one of the main things from that week that you you could endure and you could you know process all of that you know, call it um, not the best energy or best environment around you, but you could still kind of channel it to a, to a result. And, you know, like you mentioned, you are quite competitive. So I suppose you kind of, you know, catch 22, not feeling great that week, but at the end you, you built some character as well. Right. And I think it, I mean, for at least for the future, I know that I can go like three weeks in a row and feeling shit and still yeah. perform decent. 
um, I knew in the back of my mind that I just needed to be top, I don't know, top 20. But in my head, I was still like, I'm going to win this even though I'm yeah. sick. So um, it's just no, like, good to know that you can still perform on maybe not your best level, but still you can still play golf even though you're not feeling great, um, which is kind of good to know whenever you're feeling a little bit sick you're like whatever that week kind of think yeah. back on that week and thinking like i was way worse back then and i could still shoot under par so i should be fine um yeah it's it's, it's good to have and you know with three wins now um obviously getting your first win on the let access series last year and then now the two latest wins at the dimension data and the jabra ladies classic um does it feel real? I know you, It's. it seems like, you know, chatting to you now that you, you kind of knew this was all coming in some form, but, you know, how does it feel? Are you still kind of on a bit of a high or is it is it just business, you know, with that separation that you have between golf and, and being Lynn, you know, is this just kind of business and getting the job done? Um. Yeah, I think it's kind of hard. I think every athlete is kind of like that. It's kind of hard to um, look at the moment you're in. Sort of yeah. it's easier to go back to it in a couple of months maybe and say, oh, that was really great that I got that done. But um, at the moment, I'm very, I'm kind of on a hunt. That's kind of how I feel. Um, because I still feel like I haven't been able to play on the level I'm supposed to be at. Okay. Um, even though the LAT axis and, and the Sunshine Ladies Tour are great opportunities, I feel like my game um, is good enough to be on both the LT and the LPJ. So I feel like even though they're wins, and it's always great to have a win, and, and I'm very thankful for that, <laughs> I still feel like I haven't been able to uh, kind of measure my game on the levels I think it's supposed to be at. So kind of coming into these tournaments with that confidence, I feel like it kind of makes it easier for me to have the mindset that I'm going to win. Knowing in myself that, okay, um, this is, these are some great events that are going to make my season a lot easier from the start, but I'm going to win them uh, because my game is good enough. I know yeah. that. Um, so it's kind of just instead for me would be to not <laughs> put myself in like too much pressure and kind of just have the mindset that I'm just going to go out and play my game, even though I know in the back of my head that if I do that, I'm going to win. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of, which is also a good practice because hopefully I'm going to be in that situation more times. Um, and it's just, uh, yeah, it's a good practice. And, you know, you mentioned your game being good enough. Um, what was the trigger for you to turn pro? You know, the normally um, the, the conversation with, you know, really good amateurs is you don't want to turn pro too early. You don't want to kind of have that, um, make that irrational decision. Maybe you get an invite to a pro event and you get a really good result. And all of a sudden you're thinking, oh, I'm, I'm good enough. Let me turn pro now. And then you kind of get hit with this reality of being a, a, a touring professional. So for you, I mean, you've obviously had a great tr transition from amateur to pro. Um, what has it been like, you know, when did you realize that, okay, you know, I'm in the zone right now and my game is good enough. And, and how did you come to that, you know, um, original decision to turn pro? I think that decision kind of um, like the thought of turning pro already started before I uh, went to college okay. um, in the U.S. Because going to college, there was a, a thought in my mind, should I, should I go or should I turn pro after high school? And my thought was always, I can always go. And if I don't like it or if I feel like I'm good enough, I can turn around and go back home. Yeah. And so... I told my coach before I came there that I'm going to be here for maximum three years. She knew that. Um, and I told her, I'm going to tell you when I feel like I'm ready, but I'm not going to stay here for four years. I know that. Um, so by the end of summer, 
um, kind of came an opportunity where I said, well, I've got to do Q school this fall. So I might as well play the events at home because there was two LAT events at home in Sweden. So um, that I managed to get some invites to. So I kind of hopped on that train and um, play those and turn pro right before, just at the end of August. And I thought that was a good good start to like going into Q school and, and all that. And um, so that was kind of it. And I think, yeah, I think I, even though I didn't like straight up, like you're saying, I didn't get an invite to a to an LPGA or an LAT, or I did, but you know, an LPGA and play. Um, I think the LAT and that path, even though the LPGA has always been in my mind that that's the path I'm going to go, I'm going to start in the U.S. and that's, that's it. I think the LAT and the LAT axis and also the sunshine kind of, um, they kind of made this, confidence boost like getting my game yeah. sorted and having time to figure everything out a little bit more uh has made it really good and i think it's been like a good transition and, and it's part of that and you know one, once you got your your two cards in the lpg and the let you talked about you know being a being someone who sets big goals and that kind of helps you push to to get those to accomplish them as well and kind of pushes you in performance that that way after you know your two wins now already this year has that has your goals changed does this um kind of change the way you look at 2022 knowing that your game is kind of in the right place or are your goals just you know kind of staying the same but you just have more confidence in what you've already set out i think they're um, they're the same i mean um, for sure, there's always um, like a goal of wins in my season. Like not as I like not as in terms of how many or, but there's always like I want to win. I had a win this year. Yeah. Um, now it's more like I could change that and say I want to have a win on the LPJ or I want to have a win on the LT. So that kind of changes a bit. Um, but I mean, it basically stays the same. My goals are very and long-term so and not very result-based mm. at all so um they're kind of based on so that i more compete against myself than others which kind of makes that um, <laughs> and i think that's kind of what what is that makes it sound like i have so much confidence but yeah. i feel like if you only compete against yourself then i only have myself to beat then no one else really matters right um so i think that's why it kind of comes <laughs> off like i'm up here and i have this confidence boost but i just i just know my own game in terms of that i compete against myself all the time and uh, i put my goals against myself and no one else so that i can always push them higher than what i am at um, yeah no, I think that that makes perfect sense because you're kind of controlling the controllable, right? Like that's the main thing. You can't control um, th- hundred other players and what they're going to do, but if you know you can beat your previous best or you know improve or you know play the best wedge uh, game in in this tournament and get your stats up, it can only result in possibly another win I, I suppose it's going at that rate right now <laughs> um or at least getting better um, yeah i mean if the goal is always to have a lower uh lower average score then by the end of the day i mean you're probably if you're always competing against that you're gonna have the lowest score on tour eventually exactly. if you're continuously getting better and then you have all the wins so <laughs> Um, I mean, if everything goes like it's supposed to go, um, <laughs> which you always assume. <laughs> and I mean, this is, I mean, it's a refreshing thing to hear from a young pro who has been at the forefront of, you know, building this mentality and, and you know, this approach. You know, have you had a lot of help with a mental coach uh, or is it coming just from, you know, the way you've been brought up and, you know, you, maybe your golf coach has kind of instilled this in you or is this just Lynn and Lynn's way of thinking? <laughs> oh, I think it's definitely a mix of, uh, of a lot of things. I think 
um, the way my dad taught me golf as a, like a little girl, um, kind of the possibilities of golf and that there's not only one way to success, but you can yeah. um, like find your own way or hit the shots your way. You don't have to do it in terms of like someone else telling you what to do. You find your own way. Um, I kind of put the base to it. And then we had a, when I played a national team and still uh, the federation, we've had, uh, I would say one of the best coaches in the world for sure. Um, and I don't think he get recognized <laughs> as good as he should. Um, and he's probably a little shy about it too, because <laughs> I don't think he understands how good he is, but uh, he kind of set the tone to um, just, I mean, my whole mindset, kind of this thing, competing against yourself and um, and all that, he kind of put that together. Like, how can you become, why, again, like you shouldn't be in this um, folder like everyone else, because then how are you going to get better than everyone else? If yeah. you're doing the same things that everyone else is doing or having the same mindset, then how are you going to get better than that? Um and then, of course, I'm I'm different than someone else, and they're different than me. And I guess that kind of adds to it a little bit. Um, I hope <laughs> that's kind of what you hope. But um, yeah, I think it's a mix of, of uh, different things for sure. Um, yeah. And and your coach's name, or the coach you're referring uh, Friedrich, to, Frederick Frederick Bettestam. Frederick. Okay. Um, yeah. Is he based out in? in your home sweden or yes okay cool i think he has a very uh like a he kind of takes in not only the golf world but everything everything yeah. <laughs> like it's so much so many things but um so he he doesn't miss anything um and he's a huge thinker so um yeah, I think, uh, you know, with, with coaching, there's so many ways to get it done, right? But it's like once you find someone that you kind of gel with and see the same kind of mindset and outlook on, I suppose, golf, but also just life, I suppose it makes it a bit easier to take in and absorb information. And I suppose he does the same with you, right? It's like kind of learning off each other and, you know, hopefully the ultimate product is a successful golfer, but also someone, you know, just like you mentioned, just being a a better person as well. But, um, but I think part of it is also like having this, um, kind of, um, let's say like that I base everything off myself. I went to a, like a golf high school in Sweden okay. and those four years was basically like, um, learning my own swing, my own game, my own body, whatever, you know, taking responsibility of my own actions and my own results, um, which has made it easy for me to be like, whenever someone comes up to me or I talk to a coach or whatever it could be, um, and they tell me something, I know in myself if it's good or not good. Yeah. Uh, I don't need someone to tell me if it's good or not good. I, if, it, if that's intuition or if that, you know what I mean? It's just um, those four years kind of um, really grew me as a person, but as a golfer as well, just knowing that whatever I know is good enough and have that uh, knowledge of, of myself kind of and, uh, yeah. and, and golf, which makes it easy then then whatever someone says, it, it won't like challenge my own, my own perception. <laughs> yeah. That, that's something that, um, you know, you'll, I think most golfers don't have that. Uh, I don't want to say it's an insecurity, but it's, it's almost like an insecurity where you, you don't trust yourself enough and someone will come and challenge you and say, Oh no, but you know, if you take the club this way, and then all of a sudden, like your mind changes and now you you fixated on this new thought and you're like, oh, maybe I've been doing it wrong for the past year. Maybe that's why I've been hitting this shot. And then all of a sudden you down this rabbit hole of like struggling and struggling. And I suppose that's why so many golfers do go through those massive ups, but then they hit that massive decline and they kind of go missing for a bit. And you wonder why. 
it's because they're kind of challenging themselves and you know there's so many voices i mean on tour you probably hear so many opinions and from caddies to coaches to players i mean there's there's so many voices around you that can kind of distract you from from your own process and so we've we've talked about you know Lynn the golfer um let's <laughs> talk about Lynn the person um you quite the harry potter fan um <laughs> that was funny. yeah sure <laughs> what what um harry potter mm. but what house are you in and why and i suppose you know it, you might have done this one is of not those. the fan i am <laughs> you know <laughs> no 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 um i watched them several times but i'm not like a harry potter nerd that's uh, not who i am <laughs> unfortunately um but i love the movies that's all i can say but no unfortunately though <laughs> but, so you, not even a Gryffindor oh. or um, Slytherin oh. or none of that. I mean, if I would pick, I would pick Gryffindor for sure. Okay, okay. Um, that's good enough. For I me. don't know if I can mo- motivate it good enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll we'll take that. We'll take that. Um, you know, with the 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 space now between the next uh, LET event here in SA, you're obviously based out in Cape Town. You know, kind of uh, prepping and and so on. But what are you doing off the course to kind of keep yourself busy? Um, are they kind of? Do you have something on Netflix or you know a streaming um, series that you're watching that's keeping you kind of occupied? You know, when you're not on the golf course. Uh, actually, no. <laughs> I don't watch any shows at the moment, and uh, don't do that as much unless I'm home with my family. Okay. Um, because I, it sounds so boring, probably. But <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like I get stuck because whenever I start watching a show, like I have to watch all of it in one yeah. night or in one week. <laughs> so then that week is really messed up, right? You stay up late, and then you don't wake up early and then you don't get good practice because yeah. all you want to do is go back and watch that show <laughs> so i kind of try to stay away from it until i have like off time or i know that i can like waste that week yeah <laughs> kind of um but so just for the couple of days we've been just going to the beach and um just we went to see the penguins at boulder's beach yeah um kind of stuff like that and kind of did some um road tripping and went to waterfront one day and um yeah otherwise i might spend my i think we're going to do this now that we practice in the mornings until lunch or early afternoon and then we hit the gym and i'm probably at the gym for two hours so that's two hours and then um and then you're kind of drained and you go home and you eat dinner and you relax a little bit and and that's kind of the day uh maybe go for a walk but that's that's kind of it. Um, yeah. So it's a, it sounds like a really um, simple recipe, you know, from, from <laughs> everything you've been talking about this past like half an hour. It just seems like business, business and kind of like no, it's not. stay away, stay um, away from distractions, like too, too many distractions, I suppose. No, I wouldn't say it, it's like... <laughs> That's not maybe the the full intention to be like yeah. I'm gonna be so serious with my golf, so I'm gonna stay away of all the distractions. That's not. It's just that um, I don't know. I just don't feel like it's too um, healthy all the time. Maybe I don't know. No, no, I get what you're um, saying. I get what you're saying. Okay, we will. We'll, um, last one of the last questions is you know uh watching you at the the jabra ladies classic you obviously you know pre-round you have one airpod in and one out uh what's you know what are you listening to in in those moments pre-round is it a playlist is it a podcast is it um something just to kind of 
And with that, is it the same thing every single round or every single day? Like, do you have a set playlist for pre-round or practice? Uh, so pre-round, I usually listen to music. Okay. Um, I don't listen to music on every warm-up. Okay. Uh, I used to um, because, I don't know, I, was, I used to always practice with music. I used to always warm up with music. And then uh, I kind of stopped doing that for a while and so now i just use it sometimes when i feel like i need to get in a certain mood um that morning i think i was listening to probably the same playlist as i listened to the gym so something that is like very pumped up yeah um, like red, ready to go um sort of passive aggressive <laughs> 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 um but yeah um, that was probably it, but not, like I said, not every, every pre round, but sometimes when I feel like I want to, or need to. Cool. No, I think, uh, it's always interesting to see cause you, you know, everyone has their way of warming up. So it's, 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 it is quite interesting. Like I always find that sometimes if you have, um, kind of both headphones in, you kind of lose the sound of the ball strike. Um, and then yeah, you don't really one. know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good to know. I'm on the right track, guys. <laughs> and then at the same time, you kind of you know, right, hitting the ball good. But at the same time, um, I don't know when I'm standing there with the caddy, if he wants me something, I think it's kind of rude to just always be like, eh. yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. having yeah. to like take it out. So just to be a little bit like, you know, present, knowing of my surroundings and everything. Yeah. Um, Cool. No, with that, um, I think I think that's all for now. I think we could be doing a few of these come, you know, all your victories. Um, <laughs> but uh, thanks, Lynn, for, for making time. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, it was really great to see you coming down the stretch and kind of, you know, pulling out all the stops to getting that victory out of Glendower. Um, it was quite impressive. Um, and obviously, we're looking forward to seeing what the, the future holds for you. Uh, first you know from from my perspective just chatting to you now it's it's always good to see a fresh refreshing outlook on on the game and i think you kind of bringing that with your with your way of thinking and your approach and hopefully a few people can can learn a few things from from what you've done i suppose i think that's that's kind of the the end game as well thanks well thank you for having me <laughs> <laughs>